David, David's our, our PI and our fearless leader, so I'm just the spokesperson. So okay. if you have any hard questions, David gets them. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you're all here, so you can So I'll just quickly go over, you. and I just want to give a quick overview. A number of you have seen this. It's just to remind you, and, and this is really an invitation for, for this group to be involved. Uh, the rationale for it uh, really does diet matter, and I think we've held, heard a lot uh, during this symposium the importance of randomized trials and how we need them to answer so many important questions. And this is one, uh, one case where I think we do need one. So uh, David, certainly, and Searle, who designed this original trial, showed that the portfolio diet gives you the, a very similar reduction to lovastatin, one of the early generation statins. And very impressive to clinicians, I can tell you from clinical rounds, when you can show them that you can get about a 30% reduction with diet. Um, the, we've looked further to see, you know, is there more benefits if we, sorry, doesn't want to go, if we uh, look at other endpoints, we've pooled all of the data and we just published this a couple of weeks ago. And so there's our primary outcome, LDL cholesterol. But we've shown when you pool the results, you also shoot reductions to triglycerides, non-HDL cholesterol, ApoB, systolic and diastolic blood pressure, CRP, so fitting with the pleiotropic effects of statins with the CRP, if you like and estimated CHD risk. The question, though, is really does this translate into a clinically meaningful reduction in events? We don't have that answer, and that's why we need the trial. And if I put it here on the cholesterol treatment trialist collaboration, if I put it on the regression line, uh, it actually fits well with our estimated risk. Does that 0.73 millimole reduction in LDL cholesterol that we've seen, does that translate into what you would uh, anticipate, which is a 15% reduction in major vascular events? So that's the rationale for the trial. The questions we have, and we've developed some promotional material um, that looks a bit like this, so you're getting a, a, an advance on that. So if we use the dietary approach with cholesterol-lowering foods, which we're calling the Portfolio Plus or Portfolio X, in combination with structured exercise program, uh, can we reduce the progression of carotid atheromas, atheromas lesions? So uh, looking at MRI as our, for our pilot study, so vascular MRI of atherosclerosis as our uh, endpoint for our pilot trial. Um, and if we go farther, you know, can we actually see improvements in cardiovascular uh, events and disease? Uh, if we look at the organization, just very quickly, so there's David, he's the main PI, and again, I'm just a spokesperson here, but I am involved, I'm at the bottom of an important list there, but we have Peter Jones, we're going across Canada now, Cyril Kendall, um, Benoit Lamarche from Laval, and myself, we have uh, Jean-Pierre Dupre, who developed the exercise program, Yuri Froelich in Vancouver, so that's our cross Canada group for the pilot. We have Mike Farku in Toronto, and he's uh, really organized around the adjudication of our um, endpoints and, and the design, and Osama Hamdi from the Joslin, who we're trying to get involved as a center. Here's where we are right now. So this is the organization of the pilot study across Canada. We don't have Manitoba because they don't actually have a, a magnet that can do the imaging that we need. So we've got Laval, Toronto, and UBC. What we'd like is this. That's the, that's the pilot trial. The full trial is an 8,000 patient 80 center trial um, that we'd like to do, and that's just some numbers so where we have some friends and we hope that we can entice people. Um, but even if we could get a half dozen of you recruiting 50 to 100 patients and we could get up close to 1,000 patients, we might be able to start counting events and, and see an initial signal. Uh, the funding so far, we, this is Canadian dollars, so it's about $2 in euros, I think, or two euros, but 2.6 million Canadian. Um, so that's from the Canadian Health Research, uh, our Nutrition Trialist Network, and we've got an unrestricted donation from Loblaw. We have about $500,000 worth of the food donated. So we give 30 kilograms of food every two weeks to the participants. And those are some of the donors, some of whom are in the room. So we thank the California board and we thank Pulse Canada who's helped a lot with the pulses and others. Um, this is if we do the full trial. So if you look at look ahead, the budget was 250 million. So this is what we can imagine we might be able to um, able to get if we could, uh, if we were able to shake the trees hard enough, but we've been struggling to raise that kind of money. There's not, it, 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 is, a, it is definitely a hard row. Uh, design and outcome, so it's a, we factorialized the design, so it's a two by two factorial design where we have the portfolio plus exercise, the portfolio with no exercise, then standard diet or standard of care diet with or without exercise. Um, our eligibility criteria, so these are people that are at high risk for cardiovascular disease. So they have a 20% greater Framingham risk, or they've had a previous event, or they have uh, diabetes, uh, and a number of those other risk factors which will give them that risk. Exclusion criteria is there on the right. You can read it, I'm just mindful of the time. Um, here's the power for the pilot trial, looking at vascular endpoints, vascular MRI. So it's 200 people, 100 per group. It goes over three years. Uh, the intervention, so we're pro providing 30 kilograms of food every two weeks for three years, so quite an un, uh, really quite an undertaking. 
Um, this is the full trial if we do it. So MACE will be the outcome. It's a 2% event rate per year with expected 20% reduction. And there's your MACE outcome, MI, revascularization, CV hospitalization, CV mortality and stroke. Um, intervention, so here's the portfolio diet concept, familiar to most of you, but just sort of uh, shown uh, in a nice sort of uh, pictorial way. So it's a handful of nuts per day. It's uh, 20 grams per day viscous fibers. We've gone up to 80 grams per day with the plant protein for those who are able to do it, half of which is coming from soy or a little more than half, and plant sterols, two grams per day. We've enhanced that by adding um, healthy, healthy uh, heart healthy oils, plant-based oils, extra virgin olive oil, extra virgin, can't actually say extra virgin canola oil, it's cold pressed canola oil, but same concept, extra virgin soybean oil and low glycemic index foods. So it's an enhanced portfolio. This is the exercise component. It's an a la carte exercise program to reduce sedentary behavior. Target 150 minutes per week of exercise and 10,000 steps. Where are we? So this is the food that we've had donated. So thank you again to uh, on board of California. Thank you also to Pulse Canada who organized some of these pulses. PepsiCo is giving us steel cut oats and oat bran. Kellogg is giving us all bran buds with psyllium. Unilever is giving us plant steel margarine. We have extra virgin olive oil from a, a supermarket chain in, in Canada, which is called Loblaws. We've got pristine gourmet. Uh, we're actually purchasing these. Um, they're their extra virgin canola and soybean oils. We have pasta from Barilla, which is our low GI foods, as well as some of, our, uh, of the pulses. Uh, and Silk, which is now White Wave Danone or Danone Wave, is providing the, um, the, uh, the soy milk. This is the data, most recent data that Cyril put together uh, where we are. So we've actually, uh, Laval has closed their randomization, so they've, they've met their, their target. Um, we and UBC are still uh, pr recruiting. Um, we've randomized almost half the participants, and we anticipate closing that recruitment down in September, October and UBC is, is gonna be hopefully closing down theirs in July. Um, this is a, a very rough timeline based on that when we started, and then this is the, um, the three years um, of the trial. So we hope that our last patient, randomized patient, will complete in October 2021. What is the next step? Well, sorry, the numbers are off here, but it's 80 centers, 8,000, or it could be 90 centers, 9,000. The power probably needs to be higher these days. Um, we are happy to provide the, pro the protocol. So we have to some of you, certainly our Finnish friends, or Sir Schwab, uh, uh, Marianne Ha uh, in the UK. We've provided the protocol. We're, we have promotional materials. We're very happy to provide those uh, to get you involved. I know Sim and Lou has expressed interest, and I think David will talk to the, uh, speak to that a bit, and a number of others. So there's no shortage of enthusiasm. It's really, can you get it funded? So we're happy to provide the protocol and uh, the fundraising materials that you might need to hopefully be able to raise the money to be um, uh, participate. Um, and hopefully then we can uh, get enough centers that we can actually start looking at some body counts. Um, the impact, put the focus on healthy diets and lifestyles, shape international guidelines and make industry part of the solution. So please join us. And with that, we'll switch to the next presentation. If you could please at the back, the next presentation. Next, next one, yeah. So David's gonna uh, sort of address some of the issues that we've had and the way forward. There we go. I think John has played down his role. His role is really very much a leadership role in this one too. So uh, with Cyril, I think uh, what they've done, and I think which is important, and I think Geordie in the front row will smile at this, um, we've realized that you have to give people what they want. And I think what they, well, if you give them what they want, you then get a drug-like effect. You can let diet have its full effect. We never, we never run trials where we tell people, go out and buy a statin for yourself. Um, and then take it, and uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll judge whether things are working or not. We give them the statin. We give them what drug we're taking, they're taking. So I think what John and Cyril have done is they've put together a, a, a not a, a metabolic diet, but as close as we can, giving the foods that we think you ought to be eating so that you are more likely to eat them, and if you enjoy eating them, you'll keep eating them. So that's the, that's the plan. Um, and, I, and, and I have to say that I, I, would put, I should have put my name at the back on this one um, because I think I'm, I'm sort of, uh, I'm, I'm merely the, the pessimist who stays around and saying, look, there are lots of problems to all these sort of studies. Um, as, 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 uh, as John said, recruitment, uh, Quebec is 100%, Toronto is 50%, Vancouver is about 70%. We should have recruited and finished our recruitment um, at the end of last year, we're still pushing on. 
recruitment has been slow. And it's been slow largely because of uh, a number of reasons. The, 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 my wife said, Alexandra said, that you mustn't call it just, I think I was going to call it something awful like reasons why we're going to fail. She said, no, you should call roadblocks. Is what you should call it. So she, she, um, she's very good at making sure that things have the right optics. Um, ethics have been a real problem for us in Toronto. Um, we've been told we can't have follow-up phone calls even though we're allowed to send letters but there's an invasion of privacy we've had about six months of discussion with them as to whether giving a patient a phone call is actually an invasion of privacy it's a bit crazy we think because they allow us to do random digit dialing which is far worse you just take the whole population and just uh, randomly dial them and you're allowed to do that as much as you like but you can't follow up when you've sent a letter with a phone call to say, have you got the letter? Our place is, 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 is that, that's, a, that's a problem. It's taken six months of, 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 a, of, a, of an investigator salary uh, just to, to try and solve that, and we haven't solved it yet. Food delivery, tremendous, but it costs a lot. Um, and to, to get the companies uh, to stay even as one company is difficult. In other words, as we're finding, and, and Cyril mentioned that uh, Danone has been, uh, have taken up White Wave, and, and White Wave have taken up uh, Alpro, and, you know, and so all, all these things, of oh, companies are constantly shifting. So if you're running a long-term study and you're asking for donations, you've got a problem. Um, and I see um, Jordi nodding away in the front, who, who runs these things and knows the problem. Um, so an exercise treadmill testing is not is is I think really important uh, because you can do ECG monitoring. You can look at ST depression, so you can get some idea of at, at what level of activity they're going to get ST depression. And does diet alter this? Does exercise alter it? You can actually and do the interact. Uh, never been done before. Is a problem. It's got a cost to it much more than we thought. And also potential adverse events. I mean, you're going to have patients who come up with atrial fibrillation after they've been running on the treadmill. And you've got to start thinking about these because what we're doing is we're, we're having to, ru to, to recruit very high-risk patients. David, can you please uh, Finish. try to wrap up? Time Good. Is so since. we have many, many problems. And uh, I just say that we're very glad that Simon Liu is going to bring in China and Jeff is going to transculturalize uh, culturalize, am I correct? Um, the portfolio. So I think, thank you. Thank you very much.